Uh, yeah, Dr. Ritter is great. I really okay. enjoyed it. Uh, David, did you actually believe your uh, bandmates when they said if you didn't get clean during the intervention that they would throw you out? And Eric, were you serious that if David didn't clean up, you would have found another drummer? Well, we couldn't have kept going the way it was. I mean, it was, yeah. it got really rough. Yeah, I, I, I knew they were serious. And, and like I said, when I was on the radio show with you, yeah. um, I knew, yeah. and I still have such a, a community of friends in recovery still to this day that will do anything to help me, and I'll do the same for them. You know? yeah. So I knew I was done then, like done that. Like, I, you know, putting a needle in my arm was just not a, a thing to do. You know? Thanks again for the interview yesterday. And one last question. Are your hands insured? <laughs> Not now. They should be. I don't have any regrets about starting in the popular town. I think it, like it's made me closer to the Philadelphia community. It's helped me, you know, meet and hang out with these great musicians that that I didn't play in a band with. The cool thing about all these guys is they all came up out of this Philly music scene. When I moved here from San Francisco in 1981, you could walk down South Street on a Monday night, and every club would be packed. Um, this amazing. One of their early places was Grendel's Lair, and yeah. they played on Mondays. Yep. Yep. And, but you, I mean, you know, this is the era of Robert Hazard, and the Hoosers, and the A's, yeah. and Ken Greeter, uh, eventually, you know, Blue Review, and Tommy Conlon a little bit later, but there was, a, and many more that I'm leaving out, Schoolboys come to mind. Uh, yeah. I mean, all these different bands that were gaining uh, acceptance. In those days, MMR played a lot of local music, that also helped these bands to get club dates. So, uh, you know, it wouldn't just be, go see the Hooters at Joe's Club uh, Wednesday night. It was, remember that song we heard, All You Zombies? You can hear that live. Go see them at Joe's Place. And bands started getting a footing in Philly. And I mean, when I moved here, I was blown away at how alive it was. Yeah. And I, I remember the very first time we did this, uh, that the Emerald City show I was talking about. And the next day, they, they were already playing Man in the Street, but then I started hearing all these songs, the original all these songs, on the radio. There's about ten versions. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was getting really played all over the place. And, uh, I mean, on every, like, I remember hearing it, I think, I heard it, like, around 6 o'clock, Larry Richmond, I think, or something, you know, played it at 6 o'clock in the evening. And then I heard it the next day, which was, like, I couldn't believe it, you know, because I was, at that time, you know, it was uh, Robert's band, Robert had some heroes in our band that were starting to get to play. It was amazing. It was really remarkable that, we were, that was happening. Yeah. An exciting time. And that was the song that we would play the, well, we'd open our first set with to get out of the way because we didn't right. think anybody would care. Oh, you know, yeah. 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 This is cycling back to In the Pocket where they've covered everything from Disco Inferno from the Tramps to All and Oates to <laughs> Robert Hazard. And uh, Ben, uh, you in the In the Pocket show has been taking on uh, singing and the recorded version of Change Reaction. What was that like for you to, to step into that role? Well, yeah, well, what happened was that 
you know, the, the, the promotion was so successful that um, we ended up playing uh, Shawnee High School or something like that that won the, 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 the show. But every other high school, since they were like in the running, they found the money to put on the show. And our manager at the time thought it was a brilliant idea that if we went around and played these places. So every weekend for, I guess, how long did we do for like almost 20 years? <laughs> <laughs> we called it the lasagna tour because every like our body would say we had lasagna with the lasagna every every show we were doing, you know. So, um, but we played it like Archbishop Carroll, Archbishop Wood. I mean, all the high schools, you know. So it, we did a lot of that. So they actually built high schools for us to play. <laughs> I mean, it, we thought we'd get maybe a thousand entries, and it was, I believe, twenty-six million. And that photo of them with all the things around them. I, the, the U.S. Postal Service hated us because they were delivering these three by five cards. Everyone wanted this band at their school, and um, and principals were getting pissed off. And we're calling our manager, going, "Our students aren't working. They're writing these goddamn cards. Can you do something about it?" And they were actually took, uh, went to starting study halls just for the purpose in various schools of filling out the cards. You have this period of time to do it, and that's it. Um, we actually had to weigh those postcards because nobody could count 26 million. Uh, one, two, three, oh wait, let me start again. So they actually figured out what is one three by five postcard weigh, and then we had to take all of the entries from each school and weigh them, and whoever had the highest weight is how they, how they judged it, because there's no other way. I want to thank Jill for her hard work and what she done. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Jill have done amazing work and they do great stuff with education and the foundation and they keep on doing these great uh, uh, documentaries and I was just honored that they would want to do one on me. They thought it was a worthy story to tell and uh, I'm just really thrilled that, to be working with them in this kind of, kind of way. I love it. Thank you. Jill took me to, um, to k and where back in the day that was like where I used to go and it wasn't always a great experience, but uh, this last time I, uh, with Jill, we took a ride down there and she showed me what was happening there. It was, it's just, it's really pretty bad. And then, and then she heard, I don't know, from, from somebody that I had, had saved issues back in the day. And then we worked on the music. I'm sorry, Fran? Turquoise? But yeah, it wasn't initially, I mean, it ended up being the soundtrack to it, but we were working on the record at the time. And the song seemed to work, and we played it for Jill, and she said we could use that for the documentary. And Fran was totally on board for that. You know, it's a five-song, the five-song EP. That song, Turquoise Vinyl, and, and Fran did a marvelous job with it. And Eric played on it, and Steve Butler played on it, and Fran, of course, bass and wrote the songs. And um, with the glasses you had, yes, you. Yeah. Do you still keep in touch with Joe Casada since what happened? Yeah. Joe was my teacher. Was one of my teachers, but I think. So. I work with his brother Chris. You what? He died tragically in the corner of your You're kidding. And Chris Yeah. Wow. We were talking about his brother. What a great Joe. Oh my god. I mean incredible. But Dallin and I when Joe was eighty eight years old, uh, she surprised me with a lunch. Um, uh, you know, we went to New York and I thought we were just going to lunch at the Madison Hotel. And we go to the Madison Hotel and who shows up with Joe Casadas and his wife. And he was 88 years old. I mean, it was really unbelievable. We had this great lunch. And, uh, but I've lost, I can, I can, maybe you can help me find him. I, I'm guessing he's got to be, he's probably not with us anymore. Well, what a remarkable guy and an amazing teacher. And uh, yeah, I, I wasn't going to slide anything by that guy, you know, so. I mean, he literally hit me with a stick. You see, there's a movie where so there's a teacher, was it called Crap, uh, Crash, is it Crash? I don't know, it was a movie about a drummer. And, and when I saw that movie, I thought they were doing the movie on, on Joe. Because Joe would like assault me if I didn't practice my lesson. It's like he verbally assault me, and then he hit me with a stick. But I love the man, you know? I mean, when we had a platinum record, I gave him all a platinum record from the band, you know? And, you know, he's amazing. I wanted to ask you guys um, about uh, aging in this process, and I mean that in a, in a, in a complimentary sense, all of you, because uh, uh, the Rolling Stones have just put out a new album, 
the front man is 80 years old. <laughs> and I had the chance to see them in a club show a couple of weeks ago in New York, and a stage smaller than this. And Mick Jagger is putting 30-year-olds to, to shame as he's running around. And I remember uh, one of the stadium tours, they gave a, a backstage tour in the afternoon to the, to the press. And one of the media guys said, well, you know, this question that comes up for them, particularly all the time, why are you still doing this? Or why are they still doing this? I mean, aren't they too old? And the, the tour manager, who's heard this a million times, just said, you don't get it. This is what they do. Yeah. This is what they do. They couldn't do anything else. This is what they still love to do. And I'd like to ask you each in your own way how that, how you look at that as you grow and continue to age. Ben? I'm, I'm much younger. What's that? I'm much younger than you. As a younger forward, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, that's exactly where I am, but what I found is that I, I kind of, once I gave up on the dream of rock stardom, I just sort of, the, the dream has changed, and the, and the way of life has changed, and now kind of everything in, in my world is 100% music, and I always say it's just like there's different slices of the pie that, uh, that I, some is teaching, some is producing, some is writing with other people, some is, I, I went through this period uh, maybe uh, 10 years ago where I started saying yes to anything, just like, except you know, hard drugs. Uh, and uh, said yes to anything. I was, anybody that offered me an opportunity, like, you know, in the pocket. Yeah, sure, why not? I had no idea what, it, what I was getting into or anything. And that, that opens up a lot of doors, and it, it's just led to, um, uh, I like every aspect of what I do. And if, if by chance there's something that isn't really moving me, well, I, I move on a little bit. But it's been entirely music, and I don't really have a choice. Yeah. Life. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, there are other things that I enjoy, um, but if I don't get to do this, yeah. I can't enjoy anything else. Yeah. I mean, it really is kind of like, that's our real life and everything else is sort of punctuation. Mm. Yeah. Know, I mean, we, it's, and I can relate to, to, to Ben's thing about, you know, the level, because, yeah, you know, we could have gone way you know, I think in the beginning we thought we were going to be like you too. You know, we thought we were going to be playing stadiums and staying in presidential suites and, and um, you know, that didn't happen. And we're, but we got to the point where we can do this. I mean, as, as, as I say, we're at the very, very entry level of rock star. <laughs> That's not a bad place to be, though. Well, you know, in Philadelphia, which is one thing, yeah. you know, and then we have, we have our thing in Germany, and then we toured the U.S. this, this summer, and it was a yeah. lot of fun. Um, yeah. It was not always easy. Yeah. Having a bus break down three nights in a row, oh, not fun. Oh, geez. Um, but, you know, we never had a top ten record. Um, most people, at least in, in the United States, don't know who we are. They might know a song or two, and then, oh, it's you guys. Yeah, my parents used to listen to you. Yeah. Um, and, but that's cool because we still get to do what we do and make a living from it yeah. and do all the other cool shit that we, that we do. Right? But it's music. It's, it's the music, you know. I gave a talk to a men's group at a synagogue on Monday. Really? And it was amazing. I, I, you know, I, mean, I walked in, they wanted a topic. My topic was, why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> and not in like the grand sense. But, yeah. you know, and, you know, Dave, you know, even sometimes Dave will ask me to like, uh, give some sonic love to his drum tracks. I recorded these drums, can you make them sound? I'll spend hours doing that because I just love getting inside the music and the sounds and, and you know. You are a tinker. I am a, I'm a tweaker. I'm ben a tweaker. wanted to tinker more with change reaction and didn't get a chance. You will often tinker. I'm a, I'm t I'm a tinker. I can't tell you what to tinker. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of my company. Yeah. 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 A and quick story. Tinker, I just met her. <laughs> uh, John, uh, I went over to Europe a couple of years back in Germany to see them. And they had a couple nights off, and uh, John Lilly, uh, a great guitar player, and his then boyfriend, now husband, Bob, and I went to Berlin uh, for a couple day side trip. And we're at an outdoor cafe, and um, this kid and his girlfriend are at the adjoining table, and as you sometimes do, we got into a chat with them. 
and, and he goes, I can't do a proper German accent, and you can, but he's going, uh, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a DJ. Ah, oh, that's nice. And what do you do? And Bob, <laughs> Bob says, he starts going, Johnny B, ba da bum da 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 And the guy, the kid's face, and this was not an older guy, this is a 23-year-old kid, goes, Das Hooters! Das Hooters! And we fell over laughing, and then he, you know, his girlfriend worked for the mayor, and he promised a key to the city and a tour of the city. We didn't get into that. But, uh, it was the coolest little moment for me. That's Germany. Yeah, that's Germany. You know? But getting back to the thing as to this is what you do. I mean, yeah. this movie is yeah. clear evidence of what you do yeah. and how that music moves through you, and how you couldn't do anything else. Yeah, I mean, I, I really don't want to do anything else. I mean, it's what I do. I, I, I still like. You know, try to train to do what I do, and try to stay in shape to do it, and keep my head together to do it. But you know, if I'm not playing with the Hooters, I'm playing with someone else. And today I was tinkering in my studio, which I haven't meant to put together again. And I started doing that, but it's always something music related. And uh, you know, like I have my trumpet that I goof around with, and I have a harmonica, and I have a guitar. And but that's all. Like, but the drums are what I do. You know, it's what I do, it's what I, I just, you know, and I feel kind of lucky to have that, you know, so, but it's, you know, I work hard at it, still, it, and for, you know, it's nice when you know you have a reason to work at it because, I mean, we're going to go to Europe again next year, so, you know, I have to be in shape to do it, you know, so I have to go swim, and I have to get on a bike and do it, so, and, and that's good for your heart, so. Do it. I can't tell you how many drummers I meet, famous drummers, I meet around the world and they hear that I'm in the Hooters and they're like, David was sick in it. Come on, really? Yeah. There's a great scene in the movie where you're playing with a kid and David does teaching. Yeah. It's cool that you'd like to do that. I like it. I was talking with Dallin this afternoon. She goes, he gets up and he's out the door and he's going to teach and he's going there and then he's going there. Um, yeah. You, know, you are the dynamo I spoke of early in the yeah. film. Yeah. If you go to Dallin's Facebook page, uh, Dallin Pavey Osikinen, you will, I think, did you post it today, the, those photos of you and the Christmas tree? Oh, yeah. Um, so there's it's just yes, a goofy little thing, but it speaks to the purpose of, of what this gentleman does. And David is up on the second floor of their really cool house looking down. It takes a really beautiful shot. And Dallin is decorating the tree and all that's cute and it's very Christmassy and cute. And then the base of the tree <laughs> it's a giant bass drum. I take Woody Priest literally. It's so great. fucking cool. Yeah, that's, that's great. So that's great. Cool. Listen, I want to thank you all for supporting and coming out. Thank you.